Whenever Troy Grady's amazing Cracking the Code series hit YouTube, it forever changed the world of high-performance guitar playing by introducing us to the concepts of downwards and upwards pick slanting. And odds are, if you've been playing guitar for a while, you probably fit into either of those categories without even knowing it. But the sooner you diagnose exactly what kind of pick slanter you are, the sooner you can start reaping the benefits. Your first step towards Shred Eye Nightdom will be to practice these two different alternate picked licks at fairly high tempos and see which one comes easier for you. kids and welcome to a brand new installment of Weekend Wang Shop. Here with your good buddy, Uncle Ben. You guys have definitely heard me talk about Troy Grady's amazing Cracking the Code series over on his channel because it really did change the way that I play guitar. What it did for me is to make me aware of the fact that we all have our own picking tendencies and if we understand them, just like how we understand our own natural handedness, you can make a whole lot faster progress than you would if you were going against the grain and doing things that just don't come naturally to you. For example, imagine not understanding that you have a dominant hand. You'd go through life wondering why you could do some things great with one hand and really bad with the other one, and it just seemed totally random until you came to terms with the fact that one hand is just better at stuff than the other. For more details, ask your mom. In this video, I'm going to show you how to diagnose your own pick slanting tendencies. That way you can start making progress fast. As always, today's video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Sign up today, you're going to get access to a ton of bonus lessons, backing tracks, downloadable tabs, and so much more. This week, everybody who supports my channel is going to get access to some very special backing tracks that I made to go along with these two licks. That way you can practice the crap out of them and become the next Shreddy Kruger in no time. And I'll be putting up a guitar profile. That way you can make your own perfect practice session there. Hey guys, Editing Bay Ben over here, and I just realized that I filmed over 22 minutes of vital information for the original cut of this video. That's a whole lot of good learning. I'm going to put up a link to the extra super long edition of this video on my Patreon page as well. So all supporters are also going to get that. So don't delay, sign up today. Gear-wise for today's video, I'm playing my amazing Dunnable Minotaur. I just got this guitar a couple weeks ago and I adore it. And I'm playing that into the Marshall 1987X 50 watt plexi head. I've got a uh, MXR Custom Badass Modified OD in front of that. It's not actually custom, it's a stock pedal and it sounds awesome. We're gonna call that lick number one. Now let's check out lick number two. You're gonna to wanna to practice these with strict alternate picking, down, up, repeat. No economy picking, no pull-offs, just down, up, down, up the entire time all the way through. I want you to practice both of these at speeds that are gonna get a little tricky for you, okay? So get your metronome out or get the practice tracks on the Patreon page. I'll be putting those up at a variety of different tempos and stuff. Set your metronome to quarter notes and practice this as triplets. And I bet you're gonna find that one of them is naturally a little bit easier than the other. To give you guys an even better view of these picking shenanigans, I'm gonna use this magnet camera mount that I got from Troy himself. 
I believe these are now mass marketed and you can buy one for yourself. I put these licks together with some very specific stuff in mind. You'll notice that the first lick only changes strings after upstrokes. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, 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 so on. Meanwhile, lick number two exclusively does its string changes after downstrokes. Down, 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 down. If lick number one worked better for you, that's this one. Then you, like me, are naturally a downwards pick slanter. You should focus on crafting licks that are really fast around changing strings after upstrokes. For example, like I rarely ever play up three on a string, one, two, three, before moving to a different string. Because for me, that's down, up, down, my buried pick stroke, right? I would much rather play one, two, three, four, five, six notes on a string. That leaves me changing strings on an upstroke. Stuff like that is really easy for me to do because I'm changing strings after ups. Now the other superpower this is gonna give you relates to economy picking. You're also gonna be able to connect consecutive downstrokes like this. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. See that? Because the pick is naturally kinda in the strings, it's pretty easy just to drag it to another downstroke on an adjacent string. Now, if lick number two worked better for you, and you're naturally better at changing strings after downstrokes, your list of superpowers is going to be the complete opposite of what I just told you. You're going to be best off focusing your fastest licks on phrases that change strings after downstrokes instead. So for example, you know how I said a second ago you can do those sixes with downwards pick slanting? One, two, three, four, five, six, because they end with the upstroke? Well, if you're playing like this, that's not going to work that well. If you're an upwards pick slanter and you try to go down, up, down, up, down, up, your pick is now like touching the body of the guitar almost. You're not in an advantageous spot to change to a downstroke on the next string. It's gonna feel really awkward. Instead, you should focus on licks like this. Down, up, 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 down. You'll notice I crafted that around three notes and then six notes or anything that will terminate that string on a downstroke. This is going to be something that works really well for you. Other superpower you're going to inherit, again, total opposite of what I said a second ago. You're going to be really good at going up to up through the strings. Up, down, up, and then your upstroke is already kind of crashed into the next string. And you'd be able to play through the strings pretty easily with up to up economy picking. Change strings after downstrokes, connect consecutive upstrokes. Play to your strengths, guys. If you find that you can play both of these licks at really high tempos, I'm talking fast, and you can do either one with ease and change between them with ease, you're probably in the very small percentage of people that we call two-way pick slanters who naturally navigate through the strings using both of these styles. Most of our favorite players are one or the other. You don't have to be able to do both. Um, Eddie Van Halen was a downward pick slanting guy. Randy Rhodes was a downward pick slanting guy. Ingve, Eric Johnson, Joe Bonamassa, Marty Friedman, uh, Emil Wurstler, tons of incredible players are exclusively downwards pick slanting. But if you are one of the small percentage of people who can do both naturally, congratulations. You are like the part of the population that's naturally ambidextrous and can do stuff with both hands really well. Uh, my buddy Andy Wood, Al Di Miola, uh, John McLaughlin, John Petrucci, Steve Morris, there's really not that many of them, but these are the guys that can alternate pick their way through basically anything. Not that you have to be able to do that in order to play guitar. Don't forget about that stuff. It's easy to get caught up in thinking you need to know everything. You really don't. Alan Holdsworth, not the best alternate picker. Joe Satriani, not a great alternate picker. Doesn't really matter either at the end of the day because they played amazing stuff and played to their strengths. 
Now here's a scenario that I think pretty much everybody runs into whenever they start understanding their natural pick slanting tendencies. They want to play stuff that the other team does. Like for example, maybe I find that lick number one worked great for me as a downward pick slanting guy, but I really wanted the sound of that ascending run that we played with lick number two with that ninth happening on the way up. Well, all hope is not lost. If I take that exact same lick from lick number two, but I just start everything on an upstroke instead, watch what happens. Up, down, up. I can play it easy now because now all the string changes are happening after upstrokes. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, 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 up. Again, I just inverted all the picking and now I'm playing to my strengths. Let's invert that. Let's say you were an upwards pick slanty player that can play lick number two great, but you wanted that straight up sound of lick number one. Invert everything. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Down, 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 down. Now you'd be able to play it with ease. So again, if you want to play something that doesn't conform with your pick slanting style, Try inverting all of the picking, and you'll probably find yourself able to do something that you never thought was possible. So you go guys, a basic guide to finding your own pick slant and start playing to your strengths today. And I'm serious, whenever you figure out which kind of player you are and you start really leaning into it, incredible things will happen. Because back when I didn't understand the handedness principle and I was just randomly trying stuff out, it was so frustrating because there'd be some things I could do great, other things I was terrible at. Some days I could nail something, then the next day I would just suck at it and it would be terrible. It was really confusing and it made me feel like I was a super inconsistent player or that my technique was terrible no matter how much I practiced or whatever. But again, guys, it's like you're going to be better writing with your dominant hand than your non-dominant hand. Always and forever. Maybe you can practice a lot with this guy, but it's going to take. 10, 15 times as long to get this guy even half as good as this guy. So whenever I understood that about my own playing through the Cracking the Code series, my playing, my consistency skyrocketed. And yours will too if you practice this stuff day in and day out. Let me know any questions you guys have down in the comments section and be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell down there for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. And I also strongly recommend going over to Troy Grady's channel, watching everything he's ever put up, obsessively like a maniac, like I did whenever I discovered that stuff. And uh, man, let it start changing your playing. Seriously guys, it's incredible stuff what it can do for you. So be sure to check that stuff out. Tell them Uncle Ben sent you. All right guys, go grab those practice tracks, start understanding your playing and making the most out of it. Let's click it. More picking. <laughs>